Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Viking Conquest Blood Eagle Campaign on Kokata Gaming. Last episode we went up and down in central England in the search for Rabat Ragnarsson. And now we finally found him. It took us like a week at least. We meet again, Herr Bluetooth. What is it? I have an important letter for you. This letter that your brother Sigurd tried to so earnestly get. I will give it to you, transcribe and decode it, so you can understand the seriousness of the danger you're facing. He looks into your eyes with deep concern and then calls the servant to read the letter aloud to the end. Then Robert looks at you and smiles. You're a great friend to the Danish, and especially the sons of Ragnar. I must say that I knew of the existence of the alliance that unites Wessex, Asturias and Francia, but I hadn't known that they had come so far. Asturias is going to send ships and men, and not any men, but veterans of the wars of the Moors. He bites his lower lip with a few seconds thinking. Franca may have also mobilized men and ships. If Wessex receives these men, it will change the balance of power across the north. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. Take his reward for serving me well. Um, I have take to take care of Sven and news of him. I have sent men to look for Sven Bulnik in every corner of England. I can tell you that he survived his battle with Harald Haraldson, but has not been since been seen since. Some say he's staring south with his men. I will send a messenger to my brother Jarl Hafton Ragnarsson for a meeting. We will discuss this later and make a decision soon. Meanwhile, go yourself to talk to the him and offer him your allegiance. You're a person of great ability. You must enter the service of the Northumbria for us to reward you fully as you deserve. Hafton is a clever man who will appreciate your worth. After that, return to me I I already have a task for you. Well, uh, okay. And look at that, Halfton is right in front of him. That, finally, we don't have to look for another guy. There is the king right there. Horror Bluetooth, I've been expecting you. What has reached my ears of your exploits? Why I keep hearing so much taste of prowess and bravery that my mind is was quickly made up. I knew that I had found someone who worthy of become my vassal. Since I sincerely hope you will become a lord of the realm. Well, this is a great step. A great step for us indeed, for us at Horror Bluetooth. Ah, to become a true lord of Morumbria yeah? and join the sons of Ragnar and get one step closer to our revenge and our destiny. So, well, thank you, my lord. You honor me with your offer. I let you dispense with your formalities, Arab Bluetooth. Are you ready to swear homage to me? Well, yes, my lord. Good, and repeat the words of the old with me. I swear homage to you as lawful ruler of the kingdom of Morumbria. A large homage, yeah, and so much as a force. I will remain as your loyal and devoted man as long as your breath remains. And I will be at your side to fight enemies, should you need my sword. Finally, I will uphold your lawful claims and those of your legitimate heirs. Where well, you have given me your soul mode, Feral Bluetooth. You may uphold it always with proper courage and devotion. Let it be known that from now this day forward, you are my sworn and man and vassal. I will give you protection and grant you the right to wear buried arms in my name. I pledge that I shall not deprive you of your life, the liberty or properties except by law of judgment of your peers or by the law custom to the land. You have done wise thing, Arab Bluetooth. I serve me well and I promise you will rise high. I thank you, Lord. I have great hopes for you, Arab Bluetooth. I know I shall prove you so worthy of the trust I have placed in you. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, as long as it gets our revenge, we're all in free. Well, Hara Bluetooth, I've heard that you have pledged allegiance to Lord Lord Yal Arthur Ragnarsson, five bravery, and you will be rewarded with betrayers, and we shall make you the kind of example that will not soon be forgotten. What is it? Yes, I've joined the Rimbri and returned to you as requested. Ah, Herr Bluetooth, I'm honored that you have joined us. Now, as I mentioned, I already have something to ask you for you. I need you to go north to the territory of the Kingdom of Lundman. The Picts never cease to cause us problems, and we need someone to punish them. Well, what needs to be done? I want to secure a rear. We cannot take an action against the south of the stupid of Franks and the Picts. And raise an army and attack New York. Recruit an army and conquer Tontaro. Keep it in your power for at least 20 days. So that Alba will think that we plan to attack the heart of the kingdom. If you want to keep it, it's yours. But we need 20 days to secure a deal with Alba. Good luck. When you've accomplished your mission, I'm sure I can give you an answer on Small Bullneck and about what I decided from my promise. 
Oh well. That went quick. Already Lord and already we shall conquer land. And a difficult one on top of that. For this castle is deep in the heartland of Alban. And this will require to raise us uh, require us to raise an army. Not that, not only that, we need to prepare an assault and siege and well business of war in general. So uh, I think we should do something else entirely. I think we should either attack East Anglia or perhaps another realm that is small and weak and we can topple. Because the thing is, this place up here is wretched, poor, it is heavily defended and Alban will respond with force. Thus we will spend all our money, our income, our power and our men to capture and hold uh, this hellhole for 20 days. And then we're left with nothing basically, because it's not even worthwhile keeping. And it will be very tricky to keep it anyways. So we, we have to establish a base of power. That's what I was thinking. So uh, we have several options. We could attack Dublin. I mean, it's a North Kingdom, but it's a small one and we could attack it and take it. We need a couple of men, but we could do it. We'll be tricky though, we'll be tricky. And we will uh, take away a uh, Norse kingdom in Ireland. And this would also involve us, of course, in everything that happens in Ireland, which is quite, quite tricky, quite tricky. Uh, East Anglia, on the other hand, uh, will be an enemy of us before long, if we're not actually uh, our enemy already. Well, let's see, actually, let's have a look. We can look on the nor notes of the factions and see who we're at war with. Oh, well, there we go, East Anglia, perfect. Now, since we're already at war with them, it would make perfect sense to attack them. And the perfect target is Dunwich, the heart of their empire. And we shall take it for ourselves, establish a power base, and then we go for Duntaro. That's the plan. And also, this will place a perfect place for a launch and attack on our good old friends in Frisia, for we have not for forgotten what has happened to us there, right? So that's a plan. And we shall proceed with haste. Now, first things first. We need to establish a hideout. Oh, what is this? Yeah, they were voting for, um, basically voting for uh, the marshal. And since we are Lord, now we can actually vote ourselves and see. Uh, well, that's interesting. Our vote would cause a draw, but I'm, I'm not sh certain. I think the king's vote may actually uh, give the decision. But we're going to go for the Jarl because the Jarl is a higher ranking noble than his here. We have, I have no preference for either of these guys so we'd love vote for these guys and we uh, actually made a good choice because this guy doesn't like us anyways so perfectly fine perfectly fine we did make the right choice now we head back to our ships finally finally we can go to action finally we are rid of all these errand tasks now we have a proper task and a big one to capture the fortress is no issue. We can do that with our current force already, actually. Yes, we can. But we cannot hold it. So, let's gather up a force and actually try to capture these Northmen that are running from us there, right there. Let's see, 5.9, 6.3. Ah, oh, damn it. Stop there, stop right there. E, what is it? We were talking to you, I will not kill you if you join me. We will consider of you, we added 5,316 5, Penegas. Penegas come to me more easily than qualifiers do. Welcome to my army. And thus we have increased our army size already. A couple of shipmasters. We, uh, we should actually take a look at these guys. I never had a shipmaster before. Level 22 heavy infantry. 
Whoa, not bad, not bad at all. Not bad at all. And who have we here? A couple of white kings, swordsmen, northmen. Yeah, we already know these guys. So that's always uh, our focus now. Try to increase our numbers with allied troops. I'd rather have 180 men on my command and have 400 and they were crap. Because these guys, they will, they will kill twice the numbers, even if we screw up. Even if we screw up. And you know we are not going to screw up. No, we were going to fight smart. And we're going to make our mark. Now, let's actually head south and establish a hideout. Because a hideout is our first step. We need to have a base of operations in the area where we can replenish, uh, gather our troops, and basically uh, build an army because that's what we're going to do next now we are really starting we are really starting to take things seriously truly seriously now let's head to the meat hall and see if we can actually recruit all oh, the Germanic mercenaries perfect and a bard greetings you most noble sir can you teach me any poems uh, okay, we already know this poem. What about you guys? Are you looking for a man who are willing to risk the skin for glowing worth? Yeah, you seem somebody strong and accustomed to hard life interest in recruiting room. Me and nine of my mates? Sure, come aboard. And thus we have already increased our army. And now we're going to actually lead the uh, no, uh, Lord's Hall and see if the Lord is here. Nope, because I'd like to actually recruit some men. But let's head south excuse me lord for i'm very close to killing with my bare hands he said called clovis ah oh, i don't have time for your pity dispute they are truly annoying are they not now let's head actually south like we already said we have to establish the first thing we're going to do we establish a hideout because our fleet capacity is limited we cannot carry many more men than we already have we cannot and secondly, uh, we do not run, need to run around with a force of 140 men. We don't have to. We can run around with a much smaller army because we're not going to battle. We're going to prepare for war. And thus, we have to save the men. We actually have to build up uh, a, rel a rel reliable force as a, uh, so we can actually take the city and hold it. That's the goal. And East Anglia will respond. I mean, it's their capital. So we have to fight a couple of battles but we will be able to beat them i'm certain of that and then with a base of operation not only a base of operation but a base of power and with that base of operation and the base of power we will be able to take down the alban stronghold in the north and be able to keep it and actually be able to feed the men that are going to hold it because it will be difficult it will be difficult as we cannot rely on anybody else right now we're on our own now let's start things off we could actually um sail to the long port there's a danish long port here and see if we can find more raiders running around we could actually take them out but we don't want to because they will spawn as long as the hideout is in the area but let's actually see where it is should be allowed to, along the coast right about here Warlord, I've made this made you fail a quest. Ah, uh, your objection is noted. There is a Danish long port. This will spawn bandit parties, Danish bandit parties. Thus, we have a chance to recruit them if we are in the area. First things first, we are going to establish a hideout, like I already said. Close to Dunwich on the shores. And there we can leave a couple of more men. We have to upgrade this, this hideout. And then we can go uh, raid some caravans, maybe capture some couple of ships, recruit more men, of course. Uh, for we will have to establish quite a formidable force, quite a sizable force. Now let's see, can I land here? Yes, we can land here. And we're actually going to uh, camp the refuge. Uh, okay, we are too close to the settlement. And there's already the king's party. Oh, that's not good. We're not prepared to fight them yet. 
not yet anyways. Go to hell, king of East Anglia. Ha! Huh, we could throw this guy over. Huh, he's small. 231. We can beat him. 47 are horse, swordsman, X-man. I mean, we shouldn't, but uh, we should. Yeah. We should. We start we should start things right. And doing right is killing Angles as soon as possible. Now how we're we going to deploy? We have an archer group. I said that we have to establish a small spearman force, just a small one. To protect our archers. That is important. Um let's see. We could actually put the Viking stay light. Or more like light infantry, right? So uh, we're going to put them into the spearmen group. Although they're not spearmen, uh, they have access, but they're light infantry, and they don't have to be in the in the front lines, right? Because they are not as strong, anyways. So we're going to put these 60 men into uh, the spearmen group. I'm going to move them up, and then I'm going to move up the Finnish archers because these guys are worth every penny. They are killers. Now let's think about this very carefully. Asbjorn. Asbjorn is going to be at the bottom. Yeah. And actually, let me see your equipment. We have to get equipment for our guys. Seriously, we have to uh, uh, improve their equipment because this is just pathetic. It is not worth a view of a Viking. So, Asbjorn is at the bottom. Helgi, we can move up because he's a strong warrior. And Kayo, who is actually. Yeah, we already equipped Kayo. Perfect. So we can put him up as well. That's fine. But Asborn is going to remain at the bottom. It basically means uh, the higher the the higher they are in the in the list, the more likely they are spawned in the battle. Because I'm not certain if we are going to field 146 men right away. We may have to wait for reinforcements. And if Asborn is at the bottom, he should not be in the first wave. And Asborn is a surgeon. He must survive, or uh, he will survive, but he has to be conscious in order. Uh, for his skills to apply, right? And he's a surgeon, and we don't want to lose many men. This will be a challenge, but we will beat them. We will beat them in the field. Hold! I've got you cornered, give up, or I'll ride you down like a dog. We will fight you to the end. Uh, make a sacrifice to the gods, empower the rousing. That's like a speech this time. You inspect the troops and move among them while speaking to them and look at each man and I see you can't wait a significance of the moment. Excellent speech. Very well. And let's do a skirmish as attack. And we actually killed six men. Very well. Well, let's start the battle holding position. The enemy outnumbers us. So we let them attack. We let them attack. This is our first decisive battle of many to come. Everyone, fire all those. Hold your fire. Now the infantry is going to hold the hill. They will have to move up the hill. This is perfect. Actually, we are going to move. Everyone, follow me. We're going to hold this position right here. This is perfect battleground. Couldn't have asked for a better hill. Because the archers will be able... You shoot on an angle. And those have a better field of view or killing uh, field. Because the enemy will always be in their sight. And they can fire over the heads of our infantry, actually, if necessary. Now let's go for the infantry formations. We're actually going for a shield war. We can use two formations basically, shield war or moving closer, although they're very similar, but the shield war is basically uh, an even type of formation. That's what we're going for, type formation, like this. This is perfect. An impenetrable wall. Now, here we have our spearmen. Archers fire orders, fire at will, and at once 20 paces, because they're already too, too far behind. This time we have our spearmen. We actually stand closer together as well. And they will protect our archers. They will protect our flank. Now everybody else holds their fire. Everybody else for our will 
order them to fire later on. And their Finnish archers are already beginning with the slaughter. Actually being careful, I'm just trying to pull off their cavalry. And now we're drawing them in. Drawing them all in into the spearmen. We'll kill a lot of them. Finnish archers will have a field day. Here we go. Perfect. Some actually penetrated our line. And we have to take care of these guys. Everyone, fire orders, fire it. Well, now they throw the spears in close combat. Now we move in with one of the infantry because they are attacking actually the left flank. And I'm protecting, trying to protect it. Okay, infantry, go in for the kill. Now we have them where we want them. They're outflanked and they're getting slaughtered. Charge, man, charge. No prisoners, no mercy. That's it. Yeah, we got the leader. That's it. Come back. How oh, dare you to run away? I'm not done with you yet. That's it. That's it. Well, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. I was a little surprised about the charge on the left flank, but that worked in our favor. Because then our main force was able to wrap around them. Eight man loss. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. And we have killed... Well, well over 200. Well over 200. That's a ratio I can get behind. Not too bad. This is a fine start into this war, I dare say. A fine start indeed. Or maybe we will be able to capture the Lord. And if we do, we try to hold him ransom. Actually, we try not to ransom him. We try to keep him as it will weaken the enemy considerably and we take them out one by one weaken the kingdom of East Anglia and then take Dunwich I don't care about the rest just for Dunwich that's a financial base of operation we can use in the future and it will allow us to field a larger army for we have the additional income to field a larger army without the extra income and of course it will be a very good a base of operation in future campaigns. Now let's see, we lost three mercenaries, two swordsmen, a viking, a sword and a... Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad, considering we went in a full assault right after the initial skirmish. I dare say that went very well. And look who we got here. Enough! You win it, you dog! I'm just saying of it. You are my prisoner now. And you shall remain my prisoner. We will not let him go. We try to keep him. I mean, he, maybe, he, maybe he runs away. Maybe if we're unlucky, he escapes. But I'm trying to keep him because this will mean they have one army less in the field. Exactly as I planned. Um, let's actually take a first claim. For we uh, want the horses. Yes, we want the horses. Nothing else. Just the horses. That's fine. Because now we can actually give our companions the horses. We, oh, we cannot ride? Helgi? Really? Seriously? We can actually turn them into a small cavalry unit. And perhaps reinforce them 
maybe with some Frankish riders or something like that. You know, just a little bit, just a small unit, something something we can use to uh, flank the enemy, charge in for the archers, you know, this kind of stuff. You can ride either. Damn you. Uh, who else could we give a horse? Who else could be a rider? How about you? I bet you can ride. Yes, you can, because you're a Greek. You can do anything. He can do anything. Well, that went well. That went exactly as planned. We defeated an enemy army. We captured the Lord. It means they will have one army less in the field, one army less to respond once we have taken Dunwich. And look at that. Dunwich is 650 men strong in garrison, but there are 86 peasants. 62 skirmishes so there's at least 150 men of rebel they have 200 spearmen which is a considerable force a couple of x-men and 100 about 160 shield men so the top three are actually troublesome ones or the more not really troublesome that's a little bit too much so let's say they have about 400 men actually that are worthwhile to kill the rest is rebel we have 250 men rebel in there and 400 seemingly okay fighters. We can take that right, or not, right away if we have to. But of course, we would lose a lot of men. And taking and keeping a city are two different things entirely. Now, let's establish actually a hideout where we can put our prisoners and uh, leave some men behind. And we're going to build it right on the coast somewhere here at best we would be yeah probably let's see if i can get any closer to the coast no i can't uh i guess we could build it here why not you man away your orders to start building the refuge there isn't enough material to collect it so far and what may be missing can be purchased in nearby villages so order oh oh crap I didn't expect that to happen. Harald Lodgeuf! I say you have defeated the Ekval, but I will be a true test of your skill of arms. You'll die. Well, will you fight to the end? I didn't expect that to happen. I did not expect the king to respond so quickly. Oh boy. This is going to be interesting, gentlemen and ladies, for you shall see me do my best. Or oh, we are all dead. Everybody hold this position. Oh crap. With this little piece of shit outpost, we are severely in trouble. That's something I should have calculated into our... Our expectations, for they are very close by. It was very unfortunate that they attacked. But we will defeat him. We will defeat him because Odin is on our side. So the numbers mean nothing. We'll simply outsmart them. We'll put the infantry again in a very tight formation. We're going to actually use the camp to protect our own flank. The archers will stand right there. The spearmen, where's the spearmen go? Stand closer. Infantry, fire orders, hold your fire. No, uh, infantry, sorry about that. We're actually already in hold order and the infantry is going to stay right there. And the cavalry is already charging in. Excellent. Right into a shield wall. They get wrecked. We want fire orders, fire at will, man. Fire at will. Wreck Havoc. Now if the archers are protected by the camp and by the spearmen, while well the infantry will cause havoc. I try my best to distract them a little bit. Because here we really have to outperform. If you want to survive this day, the archers are in a perfect position. And we received a daring blow. Oh, we have to be careful. There is the king. There is the king. If I catch the king, we are really in a good position. 
Come here, you bastard. Damn it, they attack our other flank. I have to do something about that. And try to get the king in the meanwhile. There you are, bastard! Stop hitting my horse, damn you! There we go. One more strike and he's down. The son of a bitch with his longsword. Down you go. Damn you, you coward! Infantry, charge. Now it is time to do the swords war! You will not. We'll cut them down. This is it. Excellent. Everyone charge. We'll have them on the run soon enough. Holy crap, they have a lot of men. is working in our favor, it really puts back to the flank, now we can push them from the left side. If we fight well, the day will be ours. Alright, we already pushed them quite back quite a, quite a bit. This is it, man, this is it. Bastard. trouble there is the king and he's down sadly I couldn't catch him but there was so much stuff to do with a higher priori priority I didn't dare to charge him this is it Final push. Yes, we have them on the run. They are going down. Holy crap. Well, that was a battle. 24 men lost. Well, we did what we could and we were victorious. That's still quite a nice kill death ratio, I dare say. Not bad, not bad. That was not that what I wanted to do. But on the other hand, if we beat their king in the field, who shall oppose us? And that little pimp escaped. Well, what a pity indeed. But look at that. We've beaten a lord and a king right in after that. And we actually can't change that in because we lost a couple of men. Our party size is now smaller. We cannot uh, take more prisoners. So I'm not going to swap in out uh, a couple of these guys. Take a first claim with the loot because, well, there is nothing. Ah, crap. There is no only crap. Nothing worthwhile. And we got a ton of experience. We've beaten the king of East Anglia in the field, in front of his own capital. We've beaten the lord and lost only about 30 men in total. And we have killed over, well, 700, 800 Angles. I dare say that is a victory. Now in the next episode, we are going to continue to cause 
and wreak havoc upon East Anglia for our ultimate goal is to take over Dunwich and build up an army, build up a stronghold, take Duntaro in the north, in the Kingdom of Arlam. But first, we strike at East Anglia. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and see you soon.